so we talked we talked about um, um, uh, you know the uh, the equations of motion uh, um, following the coordinates uh, uh, the polar coordinate system or the cylindrical coordinate systems um, and we talked about it from a kinematic point of view in terms of velocities and accelerations and, and now we'll uh, also use that uh, connect it with uh, the equation where the sum of forces equal in a from a cylindrical coordinate point of view so in our last session we talked about uh, the curvilinear motion uh, using tangential and normal accelerations we had you know three i believe we solved three examples yes we solved three examples and we looked at one that is um, relatively complex but uh, um, and, and I'm not sure if you guys recall, recall the reason for that but uh, we, in this problem we were not analyzing it at a specific point we were analyzing it going from one point to another for that reason uh, we had to do the integration along the path to find a solution um, once we start talking about the principle uh, uh, of work and energy uh, we'll deal with this problem very differently in a much easier way. So uh, I don't want you to be con uh, to, to be too concerned about uh, the approach we used in following uh, or in solving this problem. Now, so uh, the final coordinate system we want to address in this chapter is the polar or the cylindrical coordinate system. And um, here the equations are still the same, uh, except we're talking about relative to R, theta, and Z. So sum of forces in R equals MAR, sum of forces in theta equals MA theta, and sum of forces in Z equals MAZ. Again, for our scope of work, we're concentrating on um, 2D problems. Uh, so if you're working, um, if you are working, let's say, in a uh, Cartesian coordinate system, how would you find um, the tangent along a path? So uh, let me add a slide. So if we, you know, if this is, X and Y, and this is the path defined uh, using the XY coordinate system, how would you define the tangent of a path at a given point, like let's say here. Let me see the comments. I, I, um, so one of the students is asking if it's possible to record through Google Meet. I am recording. Uh, I am recording this session. Uh, and I'll... Um, <clears throat> I think it, I think in this case uh, oh, I didn't think about that. The video is shared would be shared differently in this case, and I um, I'll, I'll figure it out today. Uh, I have another class at uh, at nine thirty. I'll figure out how to share the link with you. Okay, instead of uh, posting the whole uh, uh, the whole video on iLearn. Right now, uh, Wayne, uh, Wayne, yes, thank you. So uh, if you are if, if, if you are actually yeah. 
if you are following a Cartesian coordinate system, you would find the slope by saying dy over dx. Yes, uh, Muhammad uh, Mubin, uh, that is correct. So that is the slope at a specific point. So that would be dy over dx. <clears throat> so what this, one, what this slide is addressing is finding the tangent of a path following the, the polar or the cylindrical coordinate system. That is what it's doing. Uh, so let's try to um, follow a certain technique so that we all that we all agree on so you don't make a mistake in defining the tangent of a path. So um, uh, let me uh, open another slide. So, <clears throat> so uh, again, uh, define your coordinates. This is your reference point, and, and let's say this is the path. I'm going to try to make a similar sketch to what we have there. All right. And according to this, you would define this as your R. And this here as the theta to the problem. At this point that you analyze that you want to analyze where you want to define the tangent to the path at a specific point, obviously sketch a tangent to that path. And here's what you do. You go for the R, you extend the line, and you go from this line. From the green from the green dotted line can clockwise to the tangent and that is psi that is defined for you over here so again you define the r which is defined going positively uh, or radially outside of, uh, uh, you know, from the reference point towards the point of interest, you extend that line, okay? And then you sketch the tangent to the point, and you go from this dotted line to the red line counterclockwise, and that is the positive psi as it is as uh, defining the equation. Um, is the technique for defining psi clear? Okay, again, this is your positive. That is, let's go. So this was, this is your positive convention. Sign convention. So, how is it defined? Just um, you, you just need to follow this equation, but for you to understand it. Uh, if, if this is the point that you are, uh, if you're trying to analyze the slope at this point, you want to increment, you know, before you have to increment by a certain delta x, and you find the corresponding delta y, and then you find delta y over delta x. Uh, in this case, if you look at this point here, it is defined by the position r. And if you try to extend it, 
to define this next the position of this next point then it will be defined by the same r plus dr or delta r if you will okay so again this is r oh, let me use the laser pointer maybe it's better so this is r and this is also r plus dr and since here we have the same radius between this line and this line, then here, it, this length is nothing but r d theta. So this length is r d theta. So now we have dr, and this is r d theta. So tan of psi is going to be, so this, is, this psi is actually this psi over here, and that's r d theta divided by dr which becomes r divided by dr over d theta. Again, psi, that's your positive psi convention. If, it's, if the value is negative, it means you go clockwise. Positive, you go counterclockwise from this line to the tangent. Negative, you go clockwise to the tangent. One thing I want you to remember is that this here does it depend what basically it's uh, does it depend on time or what does it depend on? When you analyze tan of psi equals r over dr over d theta depends on the radius angle okay it depends on the path so psi depends on the position along the path. Oh. Along the path. I'll put in writing. Okay, so if you see exactly position of the point, exactly. So it depends on the position of the point along the path. Excellent. So let's have take a look at this example. Again, oh, but, uh, uh, one comment I would like to say: Why do you think? Why do you think we need to find the tangent of path? Hello? So the question is that, why do we need to define a tangent to a path? <laughs> to find some values, okay? Uh, like acceleration, okay? As a reference to get the angle. Okay, so what is, what is usually tangent to the path? You know, if, you know, let's say you're driving your car. So what is usually tangent to the path?
I hope you can still see the screen. I'm just going to stop presenting for a second and start presenting again. So again, the question is that, okay, then no, no, again, we're, we're talking about the problem from a kinematic point of view, right? Sorry, from a kinetic point of view. So what is usually normal to the cut or tangent? Okay, okay, velocity, that is, that is a good answer. And what in terms of forces? Um, friction. Exactly. Thank you very much. That's very good. So, friction is tangent to the path. Okay, what is usually normal to the path? Exactly, the normal forces. So, defining, defining the tangent is, in a way, is also allowing us to define uh, the normal the normal uh, coordinate um, at a point, right? To the, 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 the normal line to the path at a specific point. So this is exactly why we're doing this exercise. So if we go here, and take a look at this example. Again, whenever you're dealing with the polar coordinate system, do not let that scare you. It's just an equation, and they're making the sketch uh, to represent that equation. So uh, here R is defined as A multiplied by one plus cosine theta. Okay, so now we would like to define um, the tangent at a specific point where theta equals 30 degrees. So the first thing that you do, I have the r, excellent. I want to define dr over d theta, which is a negative a sine theta. The equation is very simple. So tan of psi equals r, which is a multiplied by one plus cosine theta divided by negative a sine of theta. So if you notice here, This A will cancel with this A. So the solution does not depend on how you're scaling uh, this cardioid function. Uh, the A will cancel out. So for a given theta, which is 30, so psi equals 10 inverse. of one plus cosine of 30 divided by negative sine of 30. And the answer is negative 75 degrees. Please make sure that the calculator is set up in degrees. So the angle here came out negative. Again, we follow the same approach. You extend it, you define the R, you extend it, here it's negative, that means you go clockwise, and that's exactly how you define the tangent. Uh, any questions about this problem? Excellent. So now let's go for um, an example. So here we have a, a smooth 0.5 um, kilogram collar, or double collar in this case, that can freely slide on the arm AB. So this collar here, it can slide freely along the arm. So no friction, no friction. And, okay, and along the circular path. So this here, this collar, double, double collar can slide along the arm and along the circular ring 
without friction at a constant angular velocity of theta dot equals three radians per second. So theta dot is defined and it's constant. That means theta double dot is zero. Determine the force, the arm, determine the force the arm exerts on the color at the instant theta equals to 45. The good thing about these problems, we're all we're analyzing them all at a specific point. Uh, and it would, would be rather complex um, at your level to take it from one point to another following these coordinate systems. So again, we're analyzing problems at a specific point in time. The motion is in a horizontal plane. So as if so if you if you can Im imagine that this ring here is sitting flat on the desk and you're looking at it from the top and you you know and you're monitoring the motion of the color from the uh, this is like the top view if you will okay so let's see how to deal with this problem uh, so Uh, guys, can you still can you still see the screen from your side? Okay, very good. Uh, okay, let me see what I want to do. All right, so now um, the first thing that we want to do to analyze this problem is so what is the first thing that we want to do? Find, sorry, uh, actually, that's a very good idea. Uh, 
even though for this specific case we're not going to need it we'll see why in a second but let's 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 work it anyway so we're analyzing the problem at theta equals 45 so what we need to work on is the r which is uh, 0.8 cosine of theta we have dr over d theta again it is path dependent we're not looking at it how it's changing in time we're analyzing the problem at a specific point along the path so dr over d theta that is negative 0.8 sine of theta so the psi or the tan psi equals r divided by dr over d theta and that is 0.8 cosine theta divided by negative 0.8 sine of theta so here this term will cancel out and uh, we end up with the following okay it's not changing the color So now this equals so ten, uh, this equals to cosine of forty five divided by negative sine of forty five. That and that accordingly, please estimate the psi. So that is a negative 45 degrees. So th that's the reason why I didn't want to analyze uh, the psi because if you look at it, if you look at the geometry here, it's a circular path uh, or the color is moving along a circular path. So it becomes very easy to find the tangent to the path. So in other words, at this location, and if this is, and if this is the R, This is the R and extend the line. This angle here is 45 degrees. So for this specific case, I didn't really need to calculate the psi in a sense of following the equation. Rather, you know, I could have been able to estimate it using the geometry itself. Make sense? All right, excellent. So now our next step that we've defined uh, psi, we need to do, uh, to um, uh, uh, sketch the free body diagram to the problem. So this is what we have. This is the object. Resemble the object with a single dot. Define the coordinate system, just like we did before. This is this is your R, perpendicular to it, you go counterclockwise 90 degrees, and that is your theta. Now, you want to analyze the forces. Can somebody help me out with the forces? With me change. Meanwhile, I'll, until I hear from you guys, I change the color. <laughs> so.
So what do we what forces do we have at C? Um, the weight. Um, that's a good point. We have the weight, but it is not included in this analysis. Can somebody tell me why? So again, this here. So we need to find we need to find the force that is applied by the arm on the collar. So how much force we we're applying? Obviously, for that to be in motion, you have to move the collar with your arm. So that means you have to. Uh, we have, so we want. Well, so okay. So while you're moving the the arm, you're applying a force on the collar. We want to find that force. So the comments are correct. Uh, Muhammad, uh, Omar, and uh, Muhammad will be in again. The path is frictionless. It, the, I don't have to worry about friction along the path because I don't have to worry about friction along the path. I don't need to worry about the normal weight. So the weight normal to it is going through the screen downward. It's a horizontal path. If it's a vertical path, the weight would be going downward. But this is horizontal. So the weight is going through the screen at point C. When uh, you were able to, uh, to visualize it? Very good. So it's horizontal. The weight is not included, because, especially because it doesn't have any friction along the path. So what are the things that we need to worry about then? Oh. The normal force, uh, I, I think maybe, is that what you meant, uh, Muhammad, by the normal force? But we need to show the normal force on the free body diagram. Okay, very good. So that force, if you notice here, this is the path that we're following. So the, the normal force is normal to the path. So let me, uh, I believe I changed the color, yeah. So it's normal. What else? The force applied by the arm on the collar. No, not the, the force is not the force is not going along R. This is a lot. What's happening along R is that this here is sliding along R. The color, the color C is sliding along the arm. However, it has a force that is applied normal to it by the arm. So the force that we're talking about is actually normal to the arm, correct? So again, this color is sliding freely along the arm. And the force that we're talking about is applied normal to the arm. Correct? All right. So let's let's see what's happening. That is the force. Guys, before I proceed, what are your thoughts? This problem is a bit weird. <laughs> Again, we're, we're Okay, let's, okay, that's okay. So the free body diagram is confusing. So let's start from the beginning. We're talking about, we're analyzing this specific point. So I'm gonna sketch over uh, whatever we have there. We're analyzing this problem at this specific point. Oh. So at this specific point, this is this would be your R. And this would be your theta. Correct? 
according according to our understanding of the polar coordinate system. So I just translated that to this free body diagram. This is the point that I'm analyzing, and this is the corresponding coordinate system. Any questions about the R and the theta? Okay. So the Z axis would be coming out of the screen towards you. Again, we're talking about a 2D problem, so we're not looking at the Z axis. Now, whatever we have here in this problem is nothing but a top view. It means the weight is going downward. Like if, if you look, at, it's going through the screen away from you. Okay, that, that would be the weight. So this is the top view. Because the path is doesn't have any friction, that means I don't have to worry about the weight to estimate the friction. Because, you know, you have the, the weight, that weight would create a normal uh, to it, and that you use that normal to estimate the friction along the path. So we're not wor being worried about the weight at all because this is our the motion is in a horizontal plane. Uh, do we agree on that? Okay. So what do we have here? We the arm is applying a normal force to the collar. So this is the collar, and the arm is for that to rotate. It will apply a normal force. That's the force. And then the path, for the color to stay in this circular path, the path will apply a normal load to the color along. So again, this is, if you think about it, uh, this is the path. I'm going to sketch it in black, but I have to delete it. If this is the path, then the path will apply a normal force to the color along that path, right? So I'm just going to erase the path. So do you have a visual to the free body diagram? Uh, uh, unfortunately here, I don't have a survey tool um, in Google Meet. Not, it's not like Collaborate, but uh, I'd like to hear from you guys online and tell me your thoughts. Because again, if you don't understand the free body diagram, um, it's going to be a big problem, kind of. You understand the free body diagram, uh, the problem is solved. I do not get the force. I do not get the force along the theta. Along the theta. Are you talking about this force here? So they, again, this is... This is the arm, and it's spinning. It's spinning about this point O, and the color is sitting here, right? So for that, what we know is that as I move the arm, this color will be sliding. This color will be sliding up and down along that arm because of what is being enforced from the circular path. Correct? So if, as the arm moves, then the, the, the arm is applying a normal force to the, to the color. Correct? So again, imagine that this, that this here is sliding or the arm is sliding through the color, and whatever contact it has with it has to be normal to it. And for that reason, we sketched it along theta. Okay, very good. Erase. Okay, uh, let's oh let's go for the angles. So
because the angle there is 45, this is a piece of cake, so we know that this angle here is 45 as well. Our equations, just like, just like the deal we had before, we have the R, we have to define the R dot, the R double dot, so that we can use it in these equations. Um, so let's solve that ahead of time. So we have theta dot equals two. Okay, we have theta equals two, uh, 45 degrees. Uh, we have, but again, if, if it's needed in the equations, you have to plug it in radians. We have theta dot equals two, three radians per second. And we have theta double dot, which equals to zero, radians per second square. Now, we go for the R. R equals two, where is the equation? 0.8 cosine of theta. Again, we're analyzing this problem <coughs> at theta equals to 45 degrees. Somebody just joining, just a second. Okay, admitted the student, so now let's analyze the R. So the R equals to, <laughs> no, no one is, the givens are not going to be always the same, right? You get, you'll have different equations. Uh, correct, correct, yes. Okay, so R equals to? Okay, so yeah, okay, excellent. So we have the confirmation that is a point five. Okay, six five seven meters. We have the R dot. Can somebody help me with the R dot? So the R dot equals 0.8 multiplied by the derivative of cosine theta that is negative sine theta multiplied by theta dot. Guys, this is the chain rule. R is not defined as a function of time. R is defined as a function of theta. Correct? So dr over dt, dr over dt equals partial r with respect to theta. Okay, dr over dt. Oh, d theta over dt, sorry. Okay. So please uh, find our dots again at um, theta equals forty five. So that equals, do we have a confirmation? Negative 1.697 meters per second. Now we'll go for the R double dot.
which equals negative 0.8 multiplied by can you guys help me out with the derivative of sine theta theta dot Uh, guys, how would you differentiate sine theta theta dot? I want people other than Wanis, Ali, Muhammad Munib. Uh, not entirely correct. Product rule, both are negative. Oh, okay. First one, okay. So let me pick a random name. Uh, Muhammad Abu uh, Abu Safia. Are you with us today? Yes, Professor. Uh, yeah, can you help us out with the equation, the R double dot? Um, well, Professor, I still don't understand the concept 100%. Uh, I will try. Yeah, please give it a try. I know we've done the chain rule so far three times. Yeah, yeah. You definitely need it. Yeah, yeah go ahead. Yeah. Okay, so it's going to be a negative cosine. Uh, theta and then uh, and then the same thing just the uh, and then theta dot is a I think okay, okay but we have but it's a product of sine theta theta dot okay, okay. so it's okay, gonna go be okay go ahead is it gonna be uh, negative cosine theta, and then uh, I think theta dot, same thing, or like the theta dot, I think it needs to go out, right? It's okay, Hello, let's, 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 we'll, we'll get back to you, Muhammad, okay. and, and see how it's solved. Now, let me see uh, Musa Tuqan, or Masa, oh, sorry, Masa Tuqan. Hello. Hello. Can you hear me? And that's, I think I think uh, you're either too far from the mic because I, we can't hear you. Uh, Massa. Professor, I'm typing because my mic isn't working well. But okay, let me see. Uh, uh, Omar Abdul Dayam. Uh, Omar Abdul Dayam. Omar uh, Muhammad. Uh, 
خالد خالد الفيومي Yes, professor. Ahead and give it a try and find the R double dot. Um, professor, uh, I would like to let you know something. I have a midterm right after class, and um, I am with you. But it's not with you, with you, Khaled. It's not. I, I need I'm you to find the answer. Too. It's not. It's not complicated, man. Uh, Bye, Khaled. Thank you for being honest. Bye. Let's welcome. see. Bye. Uh. Naveed? Uh, yeah, Professor, so we just use the product rule to uh, derive it. It would be minus cosine theta, theta dot. Yeah, and then um, minus uh, sine theta, theta double dot, if I'm not wrong. Hey, let's see. Uh, th 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 thank you, thank you, Naveed. Let me see another student. Yeah. Uh, Muhammad, is it Siddiqui? It's uh, Siddiq. Siddiq, yes. Yeah, yeah, go ahead, Siddiq. Uh, Professor, you said the correct thing actually. Minus theta dot cos sine theta minus theta double dot sine theta. Uh, oh, can you can you go back slower? Because I think you went oh. too fast. Yeah. Oh, sorry, sorry. Uh, it's just uh, minus uh, theta dot uh, cosine theta for the when we when we derive the sine theta, and then we'll derive the theta dot, and it'll be uh, minus theta double dot uh, sine theta because. Yeah, okay. Oh, thank you. And Khaled, yeah. uh, uh, let oh. me see. Khaled, no, he said no. Uh, Karan. Professor, yes, uh, Bilal, yeah. it keeps disconnecting me from from Google Meet. May I just leave the the meeting and connect from the laptop because it keeps kicking me out yes, for yes. some reason. Yeah, that's thank okay. I, I noticed it. I noticed it. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Bye. Uh, Ali Yunus. Uh, yeah, Professor, uh, I answered it before. I I did. Ah, uh, tell me. In the uh, chat, did you answer it in the chat? Yeah, minus sine theta times theta uh, double dot minus cosine theta times theta dot. Okay, so you said okay. Let, let me see here. You your answer. Hold on a second. Can I have a go? Oh uh, yeah, just a second. Just a second, Gladys. Let me see here. Where? I, th I think I have so many answers in the chat. It's very difficult to find. Uh, okay, Ali, can you please repeat your answer? Minus sine theta times theta double dot minus cosine theta times theta dot. Thank you. Uh, Wanis. Okay, so first we take the, the derivative of sine theta. So it's theta dot sine theta, uh, no, theta dot cosine theta. Uh, multiplied by theta dot, so it will be theta dot squared times cosine theta, uh, and then plus uh, you take the derivative of uh, theta dot, so it will be theta dot dot, um, and then multiplied by the derivative of sine theta, so it will be cosine theta. But you already differentiated the sine theta, so you don't differentiate it twice, you differentiate it only once. Let me let me have let me check with another person. Uh, Massa, you're back. All right, so let's take a look at uh, the problem here. We have, I took the negative outside, so I don't have to keep worrying about the negative sign. So it's negative 0.8 as a constant. The derivative of sine theta 
is cosine theta multiplied by theta dot and I have theta dot from the outside so it's theta dot squared plus sine theta multiplied by the derivative of theta dot and that is theta double dot so in other words guys you all failed the problem uh, these are like the very basic steps these are the very basic steps to the problem and you couldn't find the r double dot okay so let's go for the next the next step we have a r so we found the theta the theta dot theta double dots the r the r dot and the double dot so we're ready to find a r if you notice here guys the steps are very procedural even like finding psi all these values that i did here a r a theta they are they should be no brainer to you guys so here we have r double dot minus r theta dot square and that equals oh we, we didn't calculate uh, please calculate the r double dot Okay, so we can we have a confirmation? Okay, so it's negative five point one. So here we have negative five point one minus R, which is point five six five seven times theta dot, which is three. So A R equals two. Okay, do we have a confirmation? Okay, negative 10.2. We have A theta equals to R theta double dot. Plus 2R dot theta dot, which equals to R, which is... 0.5657 multiplied by theta double dot, which is zero. So the whole thing here goes away. Plus two R dot, which is negative 1.697 times theta dot, which is three. So A theta equals two. Okay, so that is negative 10.18 meters per second square. The problem is done. So they're asking for the forces uh, uh, the arm exerts on the color. So we're trying to find the force. Uh, we can solve along the R first because I only have the, we only have the N. In this case, as a load, we don't have the force. So the sum of forces in theta equals to m a theta. And that's your positive. Sorry, oh, we want to do it. Sorry, let me, let me take it back. 
we're saying that we're going to solve it with the arc ordinate system first. So we have negative n sine of 45. I'm just waiting for the screen to update. Sine of 45 equals to the mass, which is 0.5, multiplied by AR, which is negative. 10.2 so the only unknown is the normal reaction and according to this n equals to Okay, do we have a confirmation? So it's 0 0.75. Oh, 7.2. So do we, guys, do we have a confirmation on N? We're running out of time. I just want to confirm the N. At N at 7.2, correct. Okay, now we go for the sum of forces in theta equals to m a theta. And that means that we have uh, the force minus n cosine of 45 equals mass which is 0 0.5 multiplied by a theta which is negative um, 10.18 so the only unknown we have is the force so please estimate the force So the force is actually, that is correct. Probably we've done some rounding to the problem, but the force is zero Newton. So at that moment in time, at that moment in time, we only have a normal reaction working on the object. I just saw the solution here that F equals to zero. All right, so any questions about, okay, I think, I think we spent the whole session talking about how to find the tangent to the path and just solving one example. Uh, uh, for, for me, like we covered, we covered the chapter. Uh, uh, we have one or one example to solve, but you are ready uh, to cover. The, you're ready to solve the second, the, uh, the last example on your own. But we'll do it either way in our next session. But the chapter is done. Okay. Um, any questions about the free body diagram? But this should, <laughs> you, you, you're gonna, if you don't get it now, you're gonna get it in the second midterm.
you, ha you have to understand the polar coordinate system. Sorry. Uh, so, okay, so the, the free body diagram is clear. The trick, the whole, the whole trick in the problem, in my opinion, is in the free body diagram. Because the Psi, I'm going to use the laser pointer. Again, I'm going to use the reason behind it. The Psi, even if you don't understand the geometry, you should be able to calculate the Psi. Do you agree on this? Okay. Now, here, so calculating the theta, theta dot, and theta double dot, that should be a piece of cake as well. R, R dot, and R double dot. Again, I don't need to understand how the problem looks like. I can get those. According to this, I can get the a r and the a theta. You're just following the equations. So everything that was done in this problem up to this point is pure uh, uh, understanding of the equations and you're applying those equations. Uh, yes, you'll have you'll have the formula sheet. So now uh, now to, when you go to the sum of forces equal m a, so sum of forces in r equals m a r, sum of forces in theta m a theta, you need to have the right free body diagram. So the key is in understanding the free body diagram. If you know how to do the free body diagram, then this is correct. So what I want from you for our next session, take a look at this problem, okay? And sketch the free body diagram to the problem at point C on your own, okay? Um, all right, any, any questions about the free body diagram? All right, guys, so your assignment for our next meeting is solving the free body diagram for this example. All right, guys, uh, thank you for your time, and I'll see you uh, next week, uh, I'll be back next week. So I'll see you. I'll see you then.